Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Good evening. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Sports Extra. Tonight it's going to be special yet again. Monday, a lot of energy and cricket in general. You can see I've got a cherry in my hand and I've got it for a reason because Pakistan have thrashed Sri Lanka in the second test match, the final test match that it was in the National Stadium in Karachi by 263 runs, claiming a victory in this all important series and finally getting some test championship points on the table. They're now ranked at number three behind Australia and India with 80 points. Of course, they and Sri Lanka are level on points, but Pakistan, of course, with a better run rate, have gotten that edge. It was something great to talk about in the last couple of days of play, starting with the record that we've got only the second time in a test innings that top four in the order had all scored centuries after the opener. Abid Ali, 174. Shah Masood, 135. India against Bangladesh at Dhaka at 2007 was the only previous occasion. Besides that, we of course had another great spectacle to witness. That was, I must say, Abid Ali. I think he's proven the fact that our domestic structure, which was there for quite some time, has produced players. The problem wasn't with that structure. The problem was, was with the selection policy. And uh, I think uh, that would be discussed in tonight's show in detail as well. Then, of course, Shaheen Shah Afridi in the first innings picking up a five-wicket haul and Naseem Shah as well in the second innings with his devastating bowling getting the Sri Lankans out. But I think credit to Sri Lankans as well. It was a great test series that we witnessed, especially that, um, I must say, uh, you know, a suspense kind of a National Stadium Karachi pitch. Never the typical that we were used to seeing. But I'll have my guest comment on that. How did it play? Because in the first innings when Pakistan got out, it looked like we're probably playing in England. But then it suddenly changed and Pakistan, of course, took the most out of it as well. In studios now to discuss this in detail, I've been joined with none other. The Monday couldn't be even special. Energy, new day, start of the week, Pakistan winning, and then Cherry on the top, Asia's first female commentator. She uh, is going to be launching her book very soon as well. She's a great cricket expert, one of my gurus that I learned from about cricket as well. Um, gets pretty angry at times when people talk nonsense. She doesn't take that, I'm telling you, and you don't want to mess with her when she's in that mood. And now, of course, owner of the most, I think, trendy YouTube channel as well. She's none other than Mr. Lina, Miss Lina Moinaziz. Assalamu alaikum, how are you? Wa alaikum salam, uh, Ahmed, how are you? I'm very well. Let me give you this cherry back. <laughs> I'm sure you, you've got a lot to talk about that. But firstly, I have to, you know, uh, ask about this. Uh, you're a big fan of test cricket. Absolutely. So yeah. am I. I think mm -hmm. I, I get that energy from you because uh -huh. you talk a lot about test cricket being the real sanctity and entity of the game as well. Mm -hmm. We were so happy that we got test match in Pakistan. Of course, our criticism was there, but it really ended on a special note. Absolutely. You know, uh, test cricket, like I often say, and you're very kind to say that you uh, learn this from me. It's the pinnacle of the game. It is uh, what it should be, you know. Uh, okay, one day and T20 is very good. I mean, they're very interesting. And uh, But test cricket is the real form, the actual form uh, of, of the game. And uh, of course, uh, you know, to uh, play a test match, uh, uh, to watch a test match and uh, to commentate on it and and, and to have a uh, have test cricket back in Pakistan share dark 10, chocolates 10, oh yes and <laughs> share dark chocolates with my colleagues uh, all around uh, uh, of course it's very special for me and for uh, my broadcaster friends and uh, for the whole country I mean the feeling I I was getting while I was in Pindi commentating that test match and you know uh, sharing uh, you know ideas with my f uh, fellow commentators etc. It was very special, the crowd, their jubilation, and not only that, but the players, how they felt, you know, I mean, uh, uh, when there was rain for the first mm -hmm. few days, uh, two days, uh, second, third day especially, uh, you know, players would still go down and, you know, uh, talk to the uh, spectators and sign autographs, take pictures. For, for them also, it was very special because all of them, mm -hmm. all of them were playing for the first time at home and remember, we have played in Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Sharjah, and that is not our home. So mm. whatever we won at those places is like winning a, away from home. Yeah, neutral so something. Yeah, yeah, so that's special also. But having getting test cricket back home it was a mighty special feeling. And I hope and pray to God that, uh, you know, teams will keep coming to Pakistan and keep entertaining uh, uh, the crowds and enjoying themselves mm. also. The broadcasters enjoyed themselves tremendously here, the foreign ones and uh, even the Pakistani ones. 
and um, and and you know i just hope that and they should understand that pakistan is a full secure place now and we love cricket in pakistan our crowds and all and i hope uh, you know a bangladesh series and other series happen here yeah but a lot of talk about that early morning of the 19th toss takes place as ali decides to bat first mm -hmm. the way we saw those wickets tumble it looked like england it looked like overcast <laughs> conditions we talked a lot about the toss mm. but uh, you know we we have to think that these guys were used to this national stadium karachi pitch in another way which mm. was the typical pitch but it didn't behave like that mm. but it kept on changing every day and mm. that's the beauty of test cricket that you have for 5 days mm. you know misbah said that he wanted a little bit of grass on mm. the wickets because he after the australian defeat he wanted the guys to learn how to play on slightly faster wickets with little bit of grass on them you know pitch having some nip some zip and that is what happened on the first day first day there was some grass you could see grass and had a little bit of nip and something going for the fast bowlers Sri Lanka had uh, Kumara who's who mm -hmm. bowling close to 150 and then they had uh, uh, Vishwa uh, Fernando who's bowling nice line and length so you know they also had something going for them they bowled well and then a few wickets fell the openers didn't do that well Shan Masood you know that delivery he got it was a mm -hmm. peach of a delivery and that is why once the first three wickets fell within the first 40 50 uh, six, i think there was 60 for 3 at one point then it was a uh, you know downward slope for pakistani batting but then they came back tremendously but the national stadium pitch did have a bit of grass mm -hmm. the first two days especially it was uh, uh, you know had a nice uh, uh, you know covering of grass covering of grass then definitely turned into a more batting friendly paradise mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what we saw mm -hmm. and i think it'll do a lot of confidence to our top order i i wish that uh, i also had asad shafiq in there with a ton mm. but definitely mm. that wasn't there mm. because i think he's that one person performed well in the first innings with his of course 63 runs coupled with babar azam 60 uh, we'll move on to the second innings later but if we talk about that first innings you talked about shan masood getting a peach of a delivery accepted mm. mm. azhar ali nowhere in sight you know a straight ball playing a flick kind of a thing is silly isn't it it is absolutely silly and a few weeks ago uh, i sent him a, a message and he read it and he responded also and it's very kind of him that whenever i send him a message he always respond i said to him that in australia his bat face was closing quickly uh, you know when he was playing towards uh, the leg uh, you know leg side rather than playing with a full face of the bat he was playing a he was playing mm. standing up you know mm. he wasn't low on Bending the ball down, he, yeah. he wasn't leaning on the ball mm. and b his bat face was closing uh, you know quicker than it should have and then you play these uh, i'm a big fan of playing this uh, shot that he was trying to play you know behind the square leg mm. empire and if you want to pay, play the pole then you play it the west indian style played in front of the square mm. behind the square you played behind the uh, Uh, empire with a full open face of the bat i told him that and he was very he's always very sweet extremely decent man he acknowledged that and he corrected uh, it this innings as you saw he he played the on drive he didn't play that shot especially the first 50 40 50 runs mm. he didn't play that shot he played the on drive in the v so it was much better for them and then he wasn't getting low initially on that so that's why he was getting out he was stiff and you know closing the place mm. face of the bat and he now he corrected it so he got the runs he was playing in the v he uh, he was conscious of the fact that he wanted runs he was lucky to get that chance initially yeah definitely yeah, i think that lucky. changed changed it yeah that changed his fortune and he was very adamant to get runs and i was very very happy for him i mean he's one man when he gets runs i feel very happy because i've seen him performing for pakistan last uh, last 10 years and playing mm. some good innings for pakistan so we need him you think he read my tweet probably changed his fortunes because he wrote babar azam pure class and i wrote please azhar bhai aap bhi thodi class dikha de uh, so yeah, <laughs> that was a very nice <laughs> funny uh, i'm sure he uh, he read it and i'm sure that made a difference also and he felt a little bit of okay fine i'll show you some class <laughs> he did uh, and he did and he played some fantastic shots uh, when pakistan needed quick runs he came uh, to the party he made uh, quick runs he played Uh, shots all over the place i mean if you saw his uh, uh, wagon wheel wagon wheel yeah. you could see that he played all over the place so mm. um, and he played and the two my favorite uh, three shots that he played one that on drive on drive which you are a great fan yeah. of i oh, know yes yeah and you know <laughs> and the late cuts mm. two through the slip reasons he just opened the face of the the bat and just played them really beautifully mm. so i enjoyed his inning uh, he really because we need something from him we know he's mm. been the most successful in this lot when it comes to overseas test cricket but him getting runs 
you, we generally think that it's a good omen. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it is when a team's winning. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of positivity in there. Mm -hmm. Because Misba under a lot of criticism, Azhar Ali is a captain under a lot of criticism, PCB in general, mm -hmm. there were a lot of question marks. So you think this win would probably ease down the nerves a little bit? It should because the win always does in Pakistan. We're inclined to uh, close our eyes at everything else and you say, oh, we won the match and now it will be all good. And yes, it will be. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we saw a lot of positives. We saw the two fast bowlers bowl really well. We saw Bas coming back in form, although I still maintain that he needs to pick up pace a little yeah. bit. But he bowled well. He, I mean, he played the role of the uh, stock bowler mm -hmm. to the hilt. And, and that uh, gave a lot of confidence to the two young bowlers to bowl the way they were asked to bowl aggressively. And uh, so he, I mean, these are very good positives and the opening partnership is a positive. I'll say one thing, uh, Ahmed. If you want your openers to do well, you can't keep chopping and changing. You can't have Imam, Sh Shawan, yeah, Imam, Shawan. You got to have for two years. Look, look, right now, we've got one opener, which is Abid. Okay, done and dusted. That's settled. We need one more opener. Now, this match, Shan got a nice um, uh, 100. And in Australia, he played a couple of good innings. Fine. So, we've seen some potential. Now, what? And he's averaging uh, 28 point yeah. something right now. Mm -hmm. Give him two years. In the next two years, if he's averaging 35, that means he's done tremendously well. That means you, these, uh, you know, he's, you've got an opener for the next four or five years. But who's your choice? Uh, right you right now? Yeah. Well, I think it'll be really cruel to Imam because he's averaging 50. But as of right now, as a commentator, as an analyst, I cannot say anything else. Mm. I'm forced to say my choice right now is Abed and Shan. So you mean that we need to develop this pair yes. into a great yes. pair that we need? And as a nation, we need to be more. Next time, if he doesn't perform two, three uh, times, Stand even up. myself, yeah. I'll count myself in this also. We need to be a bit mellow about mm. this. Because we've seen this. We've seen England, which successfully, uh, mm. Alistair Cook and Andrew Strauss, mm. We go towards Australia. We've seen Warner mm. uh, batting really well. First, mm. when we when he had mm. another opener, then he mm. came up with, obviously, Aaron Finch came in. Mm. They're starting to make a pair as well. India is very subtle. Mm. They've got Murli Vijay up mm. there, and they uh, tend to now have KL Rahul over there. Mm. Otherwise, it was Shekhar Dhawan. Mm. So you've got a lot of consistency in other teams as well. Mm. Uh, South Africa do it pretty well with Quinn de Kock and the other guys. It's only us that's mm. been so inconsistent. And you do see that potential in Shan that you're saying that in a few years, mm. if we consistently keep up with him, we might just be able to pull that trick. Absolutely, because the more runs he gets, the more uh, support he gets mm. from uh, the people of Pakistan, the management, Misbah, uh, everyone else, uh, the captain, the more he's going to perform. I mean, he you know that, you know, with left-handers, sometimes what happens is that they get edges, you know, they get pitch of del uh, these deliveries, which are like jaffers, and they just edge it or something. So in their bad patch, you got to support them. And to be truthful, I mean, up till now, Sean hasn't in the last four matches, he's got a lot of runs. In Australia, he got runs. And now he's got a century, so he hasn't got a pa bad patch. That one uh, first innings where he got bold was slightly, uh, you mm -hmm. know, uh, strange. And that and, and the Pindi Test match when he played a full, full toss straight to yeah. the fielder. But we got to stick with them. We got to support them. If we feel there is quality, we got to support them. If they, you know, fail for like seven, eight innings continuously, then you know you start thinking, oh, maybe you know this is not working. Uh, cricket is very competitive sport. I mean, you can't have an opener who hasn't performed eight innings mm -hmm. or something. But you know, if they're like six innings and he's performed three, three times out of six, then you stick with him. Definitely. 100%. Yeah, th yeah. Th that is the case. Yeah. And 50% uh, uh, of the time, if he's performing, you stick with him. You stick yeah. with him. You know, Lena's absolutely right when we talk about that consistency. I'm, I'm going to take a break. I will go towards a short break. I'm going to let Lena enjoy her green tea <laughs> and just catch up on this break. When we come back from this very short break, we're going to talk about the fact in general about this consistency as well. And of course, the way our bowlers came up and a very, very important factor that I'm going to be bringing up in tonight's show. We're going to have that on the table. Stay tuned to Sports Extra.
Welcome back to Sports Extra with me, Ahmed Nawaz. We've got Lena Moin Aziz, the great Lena in studios. And uh, she's got a cricket ball with her here as well. And we're going to let her now explain something very important which she has to discuss. And I think this is the talk of the town considering that Misbah has lashed a lot of criticism on Amir and Wahab not being part of Test Cricket anymore. But you've got to live with what you've had. And both of these youngsters, Naseem Shah and China Shah Afridi, could be that new pair because both of them shared five wickets, one in the first, one in the second. Lena, what, what do you have to say? I mean, these uh, two young bowlers, one 19-year-old, uh, one uh, 16 and a half, about to be 17, both bowled superbly. Mm -hmm. In the first inning, uh, when Pakistan were down and out after scoring 119-1, uh, they were you know, under a lot of pressure. To bowl like that, uh, the way uh, Abbas and Shaheen bowled, and Sha Shaheen picking up five wickets, I mean, fantastic. The one thing that Shaheen is now uh, doing better, and I'm going to be holding this mm. ball in my right hand, and I know he's a left-hander. So, <laughs> so don't say he's a left-hander, ma'am. I know he's a left-hander, but I'm a right-hander. Yeah. I'm just going to explain what he's doing better now all the commentators yeah. have explained this but just you know just to reiterate the fact you know first with with the as a left hander he was just taking the ball away yeah, naturally yeah out. Nav naturally away hmm. now what he's doing is that he's bringing the ball into the with a flick of the yeah, wrist yeah he's just bringing it into the right hander hmm. and that when a left arm bowler starts bringing the ball into the uh, right hander he becomes a complete package now, with now that he brings the ball in, the batsmen always vary that you know one of these balls are going to come into me from that difficult angle. You see, his angle is like this, and then if the ball comes like mm -hmm. this, it is. Uh, you play cricket, yeah. you know how difficult. If the ball is just going like this, you know the batsmen You're know it's going very like comfortable. This. It's going like this, but suddenly it comes like this, you know. I mean, it's tremendous. He's doing that at such a young age. So he started to do that, and he's become a complete package. And that's why he uh, got those five. Uh, and that's weekends. the talk on social yeah. media right yeah. now as well. There's a lot of talk about Shahin Shah Afridi mm -hmm. and his new ability to bring the ball back in. Yeah. That's and one of the keys that we saw with Mohammad Amir in the Champions Trophy that we Absolutely. won. Absolutely. Yeah. And with Naseem, what he's doing is that, you know, he's when he's got this grip, he's bringing the ball in. Mm -hmm. It's pointing towards fine leg, you know, the in-swinger. And when he's got it a little bit over here, the, uh, the seam is pointing towards... First slip, First slip and it's, and going, it's out. going away. So mm -hmm. he's got both and what he was doing, Kevin, you know, and he does it with a locked wrist. So, you know, the seam position is beautiful. It just goes like this and, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, bounces off the track. Yeah. yeah. And the, the, the other thing is two uh, the different things that he's, he's doing is that he's doing a cross seam delivery also. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he wants more control mm -hmm. or he wants to maybe, uh, you know, uh, Hit a yorker. Uh, a yorker or slower oh. or, you know. So he then has, has it um, uh, a cross seam, which is so, I mean, intelligent for a 16-year-old boy. And the, the bouncer he has, it, I mean, the bouncer area is from your throat, your neck to your where your helmet Head, badge yes. is. So he, I mean, delivered a few really good bouncers. So he's doing all that. Mm. And the thing is that his risk is so nicely locked, you know, at this age. Uh, and the other thing is that he's not bowling any more no balls. So he's a complete package. So we've got these two complete packages, uh, you know, uh, with the ball. But we've also got to remember that you know, two fast bowlers are sometimes not enough. They get mm -hmm. injured, they are young, they, anything could happen. So you've got to also focus on Musa and Shinwari mm -hmm. and have them, at, you know, ready also. You know, maybe one of them, these guys, Shaheen or um, uh, Naseem gets could, injured. Could so we've injured. got to have those two Backup ready plans, also. Huh. It's not that we've got these two and just be happy and leave them alone. No, no. The, uh, you know, Wakar, Wakar Yunus has done a good job on Naseem. Uh, one thing I've got to um, uh, commend him for is that Naseem's not bowling any more uh, no balls, which is great. Mm. And Shaheen also, very few no balls. So he's gone, done a good job and, you know, all these things that I've been just illustrated, he's done a good job with that. So, but he's got to work with Shinwari and uh, Musa mm. also. Uh, someone uh, in the morning, one of my uh, close friends, uh, me and him were talking, his name is Rehan. We were talking about the game in general and we were talking about bowlers. He also pointed out that the one mistake that we made in Australia was our bowling attack. And mm. he said it was very mature. And that's true. But that was the only option. He posed a question. I uh, thought maybe an expert should answer this. Although I know the game inside out. But I was a little uh, confused as well. He said mm. Rahat Ali mm. has been part of your squad for mm. quite some time. He has that ability to swing the ball. He's been great. Yeah. Obviously, I don't see Junaid Khan coming back with the tussle now. He has with the PCB. That's mm. what everybody mm. can see. Mm. But Rahat Ali... Could have been a good senior option with the side. 
you see, I am to tell you the truth, when our attack was being hammered in mm -hmm. Australia, I did also think about Rahat Ali. Mm -hmm. I did think that, you know, he was a consistent bowler and he bowled well. Then I uh, took out his record and I saw his average, which is around 38. So I said, well, oh, average may be not that good. But then I thought what I seen of Rahat Ali, he's a steady bowler. Mm -hmm. He can bowl long spells for you. He, uh, you know, he, he's someone who, who um, he uh, grew as a bowler in Miz the Mizba era. Mm -hmm. So Mizba there as the uh, coach, maybe he could, could have been a good idea. But then, you know, uh, maybe they were trying to experiment with the youngsters. Maybe they saw, maybe they thought uh, that, you know, what the youngsters have done here, in, uh, in 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 Pakistan, Pakistan yeah. maybe they thought the youngsters could have done that there also, you know. But the pitches were different, and the you know they and those two bad games in Australia, they must have learned something. So yes, Rahat Ali could have been a good option, uh, but uh, it's not something, yeah, not a hundred percent. I mm. mean, I I'm not a hundred percent sure. What I'm really sure about, and what we were talking about um, off the air, uh, was Fawad Alam. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know, as much as you want to stay away from this, I saw the final picture that was taken with the team, mm. Pakistani team and the mm. trophy. Mm. And on the very left corner of mm. that picture, I had a smiling face that was for Wahad Alam. Mm. But even beneath that smile, I could see the worry and the devastation because naturally after the Pindi test, people were absolutely amazed that he didn't get a debut. Uh, sort of a debut because he considers this as a debut when he's coming back or a return if you want to call it. I was dead sure that National Stadium Karachi is going to be his comeback. It's his home ground but still didn't happen. And I am probably one of the biggest fans of Haris Sohail. I can tell you that but in limited overs cricket because I've seen him develop from Sialkot Stallions under the captaincy of Shweb Malik. A lot of similarity between them. Use the same bat as well. But test cricket, I, I think any time of the day, any day of the year for Wad Alam. I agree, uh, agree with you and also in Australia, I thought he could have played because he, he uses the box really well, he get back foot player, he can sort of, uh, you know, uh, go on the back foot and maneuver the ball from there, take singles, doubles and when he gets set, he can also, you know, pay, play those uh, high elbow um, uh, uh, punches, yeah. punches towards cover mm -hmm. and cover point and towards uh, backward square, square leg also. Uh, uh, towards the side also and because he uses the box so well. So, um, I, I thought he could have been a good choice there and like you, I was certain that he was going to get a chance in Karachi but he didn't and the, the, the reason I was so sad was that Mizba suffered like this himself. Mm -hmm. I mean, seven, eight years he was just, you know, around the team ready to be selected. On uh, the bench. <laughs> on the bench. I saw him, the first time I saw him was 1998. I didn't even know who he was. Mm -hmm. And then someone told me, this is Mizba, you know, he's doing really well in, uh, in, in domestic cricket. And then he, d and it took him many years after 98. Mm -hmm. This was the series Australia versus Pakistan where Taylor got 334, that series. And he, I saw him then the first time and then I totally forgot about him. And then many years later he surfaced. So he knows that pain. Pain of being on the sidelines, pain of not being select uh, selected, pain of injustice, he knows that. So it's doubly sad that someone like Mizba, who has suffered the same uh, kind of uh, fate, you know, he di didn't select him. So it's doubly sad for me. I really wish that Mizba should have felt uh, Fawad Alam's pain and given him a chance instead of Harif Sohail, who was off color in Australia also. I, for one, think that both Abid Ali and Fawad Alam should have been given a chance in Australia. Mm -hmm. Both of them, Abid Ali also back foot player, punches, you know, drives, steady, back foot steady, drives, yeah. you know, and uh, pretty confident. I think both of them should have been uh, given a chance. Maybe the result uh, could have yeah, been different. Different, but my, my pain uh, is not that he didn't play. My pain is that why would you select him in the first place and cause mm -hmm. him more misery? I mean, when he was out of the side, at least he knew that, you know, I'm not in consideration. But once you pick a guy out of nowhere, because I'm saying out of nowhere, because they didn't have this on their plans in Australia, then immediately after coming back from Australia, because I think there was a lot of pressure from the media, mm. from the cricketing fraternity, from the nation, they had to generally pick him. But I thought, if you're not going to get him in the playing 11, don't pick, pick the poor chap in the first place. 
with a very heavy heart i have to say that sometimes lobbies also work mm. with a very heavy heart i mean i'm not the per- sort of person who's going to create this ad- agenda people who know me uh, know that i'm not going to create it but i during the pindi test match i felt that you know there's certain part of uh, uh, the you know the uh, lahore lobby which didn't want Mm-hmm. um for wad alam to be in the team now i am not sure if that lobby has any connections with misbah or not i am not sure why misbah didn't select him if he was you know he was selected and he wasn't picked in the final 11 i have a feeling that misbah will now probably give him a chance the mm-hmm. next uh, series, seri- series yeah. yeah which i, w- I hope uh, bangladesh comes here and they p- play test matches so i feel his chance is not too far away mm-hmm. so I think it's a good time for Fawad Alam to stay uh, in the groove, to stay positive. His chance, I have a feeling, is not too far away, and I think Misbah also realizes that he, you know, eventually his chance has to come. Uh, and if I'll be highly surprised and terribly depressed if it doesn't come. I'm, I'm, you know? I'm very happy with a lot of positives that we're seeing after this victory. Now we know our batsmen have the confidence that they can score big runs. We played mm-hmm. at our home, own home soil. PCB's got a set agenda that cricket now is going to be in Pakistan, nowhere else for home series. I'm a little skeptical now because I think when we tend to focus on one weakness, we tend to open up another. When we mm. focus on that, a third one surfaces. Mm. I'm very skeptical about our spin bowling department right now. Oh. I think Yasir Shah wicketless <laughs> in the first innings, second innings you saw it as well. Uh, I think that. Energy, the flair that a spinner, and I often compare spinners to Nathan Lyon because he's the best spinner right now in the world. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That you know, that hunger to mm. take wickets, that hunger to if if a bowler isn't setting the batsman up, mm. especially a spinner, mm. just hoping that the ball would do something, then I don't think that you know this is a big question mark right now. I'm actually pretty sad for Yasser. You know, he was uh, fastest to 200. and i feel that you know since he only plays the uh, test cricket for pakistan he gets a lot of long lay off periods where he doesn't get to play any competitive cricket international cricket like he's played these two test match i feel he was just coming into the groove from around the wicket angle especially you know one or two balls really mm-hmm. spun today he got the wicket also you got the wicket of the centurion today mm-hmm. he got uh, some spin and you know bounce also so he got that wicket so I feel that whenever he starts coming in the groove, the Test series ends, and then you know there is a layoff for a few months, and then he becomes rusty. His confidence, which starts to go up, you know, goes down again. So I think this layoff thing for players like Azhar Ali and Asad and um, uh, Yasser, who only play Test cricket, there has to be some solution for that. Mm. And I think this is an area that PCB has to look at. I mean, what can we do? uh what can they do what can we do for a players like them because i feel today i thought from that around the wicket angle he was getting some spin you know mm-hmm. and 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 some browns so and that is why he got the he defeated the uh, centurion uh, defeated him beat him got that edge so but then it's so sad that now there'll be a layoff for mm-hmm. him but if bangladesh comes i don't want the pakistani management to drop him i still want uh them to play him and i am very proud of azhar ali because he started off with him today yeah that's a you know, brave move that was very good move and that he i probably had the same thing in his mind what i am saying you know he mm. wanted to give him some more overs he wanted to give him more overs under his belt so if you know there is a test uh, series close by he's in good confidence and that wicket must have given him confidence so you know that's the thing with and i feel they should train more spinners yeah that's very you important know, no maybe, backup right now a left armer also you know mm. uh, we have kashif uh, we should give him a chance somewhere or the other maybe if there is a pitch where the two spinners can be played in tandem maybe both of them can play and also uh, off spinner which pakistan i mean uh, tawseef ahmed uh, and then of course um, we had uh, saeed ajmal we've had some great saklan mushtaq yeah. we have we've had some great uh, off spinners mm. and now we we seem to have a drought yeah we just had a glimpse of bilal asif and then yeah and then there was yeah. some problem with his action but then mm. i think it was okay i think bilal As- asif could also be he's tall he could be you know he could be pretty good but then we now seem to have a drought 
of, of spinners. So, we need to produce all these spinners and uh, uh, something has to be done about that also. Uh, drastically. Yeah, 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 because you know spinners, uh, you know, they are needed on some wickets. I mean, you go to Sri Lanka, you probably need two good spinners. Mm -hmm. If you don't have them, one is uh, out of touch and you don't have the other one, how, how would you succeed in uh, Sri Lanka? Mm -hmm. I mean, not everywhere these fast bowlers are going to take you through. It was tremendous today that uh, we won the test match because of our fast bowlers. Mm -hmm. I mean, mainly our fast bowlers, 90% yeah. of the work, uh, wickets, victory was given to us, presented to us by our fast yeah, bowlers. Yeah, the wicket had a lot to do yeah, with it. Didn't yeah, it? and even, I mean, they performed really well, but there are places there, you know, uh, like Sri Lanka, for instance, I mean, mm. if you go there or you go to Bangladesh, you need spinners. So, we have to develop spinners and we have to have a set of like four or five spinners also ready to play for Pakistan. Yeah, because then at the as a plan B, we start using Azhar Ali as a leg spinner, we start I mean, using Azhar Shafiq, yeah. get an Iftikhar Ahmed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, I mean, someone like someone tells me today, oh yeah, we played Haris, Haris Sohail because he gave us the breakthrough two yeah. times and we didn't play for Waad Alam. Mm. I think that's a rubbish argument. Yeah. Rubbish, mm. utter rubbish. And I don't buy it. For, for two rupees, I won't buy it. <laughs> you know, play. I mean, you can't say that, you know, someone like Fawad Alam didn't play because Haris Soil managed to get a wicket. Get a wicket, yeah. yeah I mean, that you know, wicket could have been provided with Fawad as well yeah, because he yeah, bowls he the same amount also, of yeah. yeah, anyone else could have picked up that wicket. So Definitely. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Lena, that, that being said now, before we wrap up, 113k subscribers going even higher. Hmm. Pretty hopeful. How are you feeling this digital media spectrum around you with your YouTube channel? I mean, I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm I'm someone who enjoys the game. I love the game. I'm a, I'm a cricket cr uh, tragic. So if my YouTube thing increases, I'm gonna be happy. And you know, yeah. the whole. And, and for yeah. the record, I said 113. That comes after 12, not 30 after 29. So you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. so I mean, if our you know our show, this show, um, uh, we have more um, YouTube, um, you know, viewership, uh, viewership, or my own personal or yours. Mm. I mean, it's the same happiness. And it's great for to me. see that people are so informed about cricket mm. that even uh, on your YouTube channel, whether mm. we're uh, promoting sports extra through YouTube with mm. our PTV social mm. handles, people are actually asking genuine questions. Mm. And our nation is now aware a lot of about the game mm. of course still mm. nonsense did, is still there but people now are very keenly observing the game yeah yeah absolutely i mean and i have so much fun on on match days when i'm constantly interacting with my fans mm -hmm. youtube fans i was telling a friend today that you know uh, on a match day i could i get thousands mm -hmm. of youtube uh, messages mm -hmm. tweets so i'm like uh, and tweets also you know i'm constantly interacting when it's great fun and they're asking some really pertinent questions mm -hmm. it's great fun for me also so you know i think it's it's a great idea i mean you're watching the game you're answering people's questions you're interaction all like it. it's like you know you are some aristotle or you, you <laughs> suddenly you become tolstoy yeah you know your whole existence is about intellect and uh, you know your uh, his uh, existence was about writing mm. intellect and you know just how painters are totally in the zone mm. for me when i'm watching test cricket or any cricket in what mean, i'm in the zone i mean i'm sitting on I'm, if i'm not doing a show mm. um, i'm not commentating i'm in my room on my chair or on my bed with my phone next to me and you know tv right and i'm tweeting watching you know phone calls coming from different mm. channels so i'm in that zone and i enjoy that i mean yeah. just this just that's just my first love. That's who you are. Yeah, that's, that, who that's I what am, yeah. makes it up. Yeah. Lena, we're going to leave it at that. Thank you very much. I Anytime, understand that if you're, if you're on Twitter, then you know that Lena throws a lot of bounces <laughs> on Twitter as well. So you need to just duck them, left them, let them go. But that's it for this edition of Sports Extra. Of course, we're going to join you tomorrow once again with me and the entire team. Out until then, from everyone here at PTV World and Sports Extra, it's goodbye for now.